just at the level of how software works procedurally, can give us a, a glimpse into various kinds of arguments that, that may or may not be forefronted. That first quote that I pointed out, the reason I picked it was, it wasn't the Obama campaign saying, um, of course we should sit down with, with our enemies. It was ABC News, right? Because the, in certain places, the media ends up sort of parroting the same talking points as the campaign, right? So it's not just the campaign that's telling us what the sort of talking points are, what the what, what the, the message is that they want to stay focused on. The media ends up repeating a lot of that. By thinking more carefully about these procedures, we can see sort of another level of argument, or all of these levels at once. And I'm fairly certain that that's where I'm going to stop and open it up for questions. It's very interesting when uh, you try to think subjective material and, and put it into some formal identity framework. Um, these are just things that stop. Uh, one way of utilizing formal uh, materials is to, is to draw conclusions lead you in certain directions. Um, another way is simply to capture the information that's available in a more formal way. And at many times I, I, I thought, well, again, um, just trying to think about this. Mm -hmm. well, how is this different than uh, I tried to sell encyclopedias as a kid to make money during the summer? That's not how I got through college. Uh, but it was a procedure. Uh, if, if somebody answers the door, put your foot in it. Okay? <laughs> Else bang our yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and so where does this simply capture in more formal terms what is being done? And where, if it does, does it lead you beyond merely a different language to capture what is doing? Okay, so very good questions. Um, in the sort of article version length of this, I go into a little bit more detail about how how I see being procedurally literate as linked to being software literate and the importance of being software literate. So part of the argument is that you know software is ubiquitous and invisible, affecting us in lots of different ways, in ways that we may not sort of always be aware of. Interacting with software, we don't, we're not always taught, or if we're not computer programmers, we're not told to think critically about procedurality, about how we, the, the options offered to us by software, what sort of arguments are being made by it, right? So what I'm interested in is tracking procedurality in software and then also in other spaces to show that, um, and that's an, that's an argument taken from Bogos, who says that he's interested in procedural rhetorics to talk about software, but that they can be taught, that we can talk, see them everywhere. The, the encyclopedia salesman is another example of a procedure. We, we already do it. The difference is seeing, for me here, the difference is seeing the difference between talking points, which is content, right, which is say these things. And the procedure, which is the arrangement, which is, you know, at, and now we're in the sort of, in the purview of rhetoric, right? The arrangement of those talking points in certain contingent uh, situations and scenarios. If, okay, I have my list of talking points, how do I arrange them in, by this sort of series of if-then-else statements? So I want to want to talk about both of those, both how software arranges material and content and how we do it and how those things sort of work together. Does that Okay, uh, just a very quick follow-up. Sure. Uh, but the procedures, even when formalized, don't lead a person to conclude what their reflection should be when they have an experience in which the programmatic, if that, doesn't work and they have to try, like the person who was not being talking by female, mm -hmm. females in the campaign. Uh, if they don't, that's something outside of the whole formal framework, right? Okay, so the, 
the Bogos, the Bogostian response, if, if there is such a thing, right, would be that's just he's just backing up into another procedure. That when he backs out of the procedure he's written or 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 changes it in that, like okay, I've got to do something different. He's backing into another procedure. That's that's procedures true. all the way down. But then it gets back to the first point. Uh -huh. Basically, what is being done is the past experience in the form of yes. terms. But it really ends there. It isn't that the formal terms then lead to deductions about behavior that should occur. The right. stated rules yes. of behavior, but they're not deductions about behavior. Right. Yes. Uh, I guess I would agree. Yeah. yeah, I guess I mean, uh, a related question, I think, is one of where you draw the line between procedure and content. Right, so you, you, you've made the point that, um, you know, in, in the call script, um, when you write it out as a PHP program, um, the, there's, the content is less important than the procedure itself, right? And, and, and the procedure kind of encodes this non-confrontationality. But um, you could have some conf confrontational, con I mean, your outermost else mm -hmm. response could be, well, you know, you know, if, if someone says they're a supporter, then do this, you know, and, and go on into a whole other procedure with a whole lot of content inside of it. And so I guess um, there is, you know, you're sort of stepping through a decision tree or whatever kind of metaphor you want to use for how you're encoding this, um, the, your instructions on what to do next. Um, but I guess I'm wondering how to, outside of the software metaphor, how to draw a principled line between what's procedure and what's the content being executed through the It's procedure. difficult, was <laughs> my answer. Uh, in writing this, I kept coming to moments in the, in the essay form or version where I was like in, incapable of holding them apart. So I think in, in the sort of phone tree example, it's very difficult to hold them apart. Mm -hmm. um, in software, it's much easier. Uh, and in, in, that, in sort of that realm, it becomes about understanding. The, the reason I even sort of came to I came to this discussion was reading a sort of series of books with a, a grad seminar. Some of those folks are here on software studies. One of the sort of, uh, which is a burgeoning sort of emerging set of scholarship about not just you know how do we how, how to write software, but how do we read and understand and sort of interpret software in everyday life. Okay, one of the sort of major points of that scholarship as it's emerging is to show people the difference between content and procedures in things like story generation software. So. Somebody writes a program that writes, quote unquote, writes narratives all on its own. Um, one of these programs is called Brutus, and I forget what school it came out of, um, possibly Berkeley, I can't remember. And the, 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 the journalists who are covering this are saying, wow, they've written this thing that writes stories that people can't tell the difference between Brutus's story and Jeff's story. Like people put put next, especially Jeff's course. <laughs> Awful, an awful writer of stories. So, so no. So you set these side by side, and, and and they're saying people can't tell the difference. Well, the, the the people examining the actual program, not the journalists, the scholars who examine the program, say, well, of course that's the case. But that's because the program really isn't doing anything. It's arranging human generated content. Okay. There's a distinction then between, and there, but there are other programs that do write stories procedurally that do not rely on human. Entered content. There are more complex story generation engines that we should be sort of amazed by. However, their stories are awful, right? right? They can't write stories. So that, in, in that sort of being being cognizant of how software works and being more software literate, I see as an important issue, sort of for the the citizenry. I think we have offloaded that kind of work programmers by and large. We're scared of software. We don't want to sort of dig around in the nuts and bolts of it. Mostly because when I put that stuff on screen, everyone just goes, what is that, right? So that's the first step is how do we understand software and how it enacts procedures and how that's different from just rearranging human generated content. The, the, the next step, which I may or may not be successful at, or Bogos may or may not be successful at, is to then see if we can track procedures into other realms and relate that back to a software literacy. Okay, so you should, it's not completely foreign to you. You do interact with procedures.